In this video, we're going to see how you can quickly move people or objects to different parts of your photo using Photoshop Elements. For example, we'll see how to go from this to this, and from this to this. We'll also see how you can move things higher or farther, all by using a great little tool in Photoshop Elements called the Content Aware Move Tool. Hi, I'm Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and see how to use this amazing tool. I'm using Photoshop Elements 13 for this video, but the Content Aware Move Tool was first added to Photoshop Elements 12. So, if you have version 12 or newer, you'll be able to use this tool. Let's start by duplicating the background layer so we can make our changes there and leave the original background layer unchanged. To do that, you can press Command J on a Mac or it would be Control J on a PC. Our new layer appears in the Layers panel and it's named Layer 1 by default. Now click on the eye next to the background layer to hide its visibility. Since we won't be changing anything on the background layer, let's make it so that we don't even see it. And let's say that we want to move this flamingo on the right side of our photo closer to the other flamingo. We could start by using the lasso tool to make a selection around the flamingo that we want to move. So let's do that. I'll get the lasso tool from the toolbox by clicking on it. And then I'm just going to click and drag and kind of follow the shape of the flamingo. I'll get the shadow down there too. Okay, and now we'll switch to the move tool and place our cursor inside of the selected area and then click and drag to move our flamingo over closer to the other one. You can see that with the regular move tool we're left with a hole in the photo in that area of our original selection. The gray and white checkerboard pattern indicate that there are no pixels there and that that part of layer 1 is transparent. We would somehow need to fill in that area to make it match the surrounding area, which can sometimes be a challenge to make it look believable. Plus, it can be very time consuming. Now, let's get rid of the selection by pressing Command D on a Mac, or it would be Control D on a PC, to deselect. After the selection is gone, we can see a distinct edge between the new area that we moved the flamingo to and the path of our selection. It's similar to if in the physical world we took this photo and cut out the flamingo on the right side and then just glued it next to the other flamingo. So let's undo that and see what happens when we use the Content Aware Move tool to move the flamingo. So I'll press Command Z on a Mac or it would be Control Z on a PC a couple times. Let's go over to the toolbox and make the Content Aware Move tool active. It's way down at the bottom and looks like two wavy arrows overlapping each other. Let's click on it to make it active. Notice down in the Tool options for the Content Aware Move tool that we have it set to Move mode. For now, we can ignore the healing slider, and since both of our layers are exactly the same, it doesn't matter whether or not we have Sample All Layers checked. The Content Aware Move tool is used the same way as the Lasso tool is to make a selection around the area that you want to move. So let's use the Content Aware Move tool to click and drag around the flamingo on the right. And as we do it looks just like it did when we drew our selection with the Lasso tool. Once I get close to where I originally clicked, I can just release the mouse button and elements will automatically connect the area from where I release to where I started drawing the selection. And Photoshop Elements closes the path and the line turns into the marching ants, indicating that we have a selection around our subject. At this point, all we've done with the Content Aware Move tool is to draw a selection around our subject. We could have actually used the Lasso tool or the Marquee tool to make a selection, but for the next steps that we're going to do, we do need to be using the Content Aware Move tool. Place your cursor anywhere inside of the selected area, and then click and drag to where you want to move that subject to, just like we did with the Move tool before. So I'll put it like right here, and let go. 
Photoshop Elements analyzes the area around where the subject was and fills in that area based on that analysis. So instead of having a hole here like we did with the Move tool, Elements actually looked at the pixels that surrounded that selection we made and then it filled that hole in based on pixels that surrounded that area. I'm just going to hide that selection around the Flamingo by pressing Command H on a Mac or it would be Control H on a PC. And maybe you can tell a little bit where our selection line was but it's not nearly as distinct of an edge as we had when we used just the move tool. So in addition to filling in that original area, it also analyzes the area around where we move the subject to and it tries to blend it more seamlessly into that area. So two huge advantages of the content aware move tool. Now I'm going to switch to another photo that has a more complicated background. Let's say that in this photo we want to move this boy closer to the girl on the right. So first I'll duplicate the background layer by pressing Command or Control J. And then I'll turn off the visibility of the background layer. And I still have the Content Aware Move tool active in the toolbox. So I'll just click and drag around this kid over here to make a selection. and then put my cursor inside the selected area and click and drag to move them closer to the girl. Before I let go of the mouse, I want to see if there's any areas that I can kind of line up. And I'm looking at the area right behind the boy between the sky and those hills. And you can see I can kind of line them up with the rest of the photo if I do that. I'll kind of line that area up and then release the mouse button and let elements analyze the photo and you can see it did a pretty good job of filling in the area if I hide the selection of the boy by pressing command or control H you can tell that he's been plopped in there but it did a pretty good job around a lot of the area to blend it in seamlessly but we do have some pretty obvious areas over on the right side of him here that's why instead of deselecting I just wanted to hide the selection so I'm gonna make our selection visible again by pressing Command or Control H. Same keyboard shortcut that we used to hide the selection. The reason I did that is because while you still have your selection active, you can go down into the tool options and play around with this healing slider. And sometimes that slider will help blend those areas in a little better. You really don't know until you try it, so let's just try it. Now this slider doesn't work like some other sliders in Elements where a less amount of healing would be done if you set the slider all the way over to the left side and that the maximum healing would be achieved if you move the slider all the way over to the right side. Instead there's five different uh, marks and each one just uses a different algorithm to adjust the photo. So right now the results we got are from the slider in the middle position and you must keep your selection around your subject active to try the different healing options. Let's move it over to the first position on the left and see what happens. And after it analyzes it, I think it actually did a better job not only the area where we took the kid from, but also for blending him into the background. So I like that position better than the middle position. Let's try the next position here over to the right. That one kind of messed up some areas over here again, so I don't think that's as good as that first position. We already know what the middle position looks like, so let's go to this next position here. And that does a pretty good job of blending the two areas together also, especially over here where we got the original one from. So that's a possibility, but I don't really necessarily think it's any better than the first one, but we can check that out in a little bit. Let's just try this last position. I don't think that did any. Thing. I just don't think that's as good as the other two areas we liked, which were the second to the last position here, or the other one was the first position over on the left. So at this point, I'm going to deselect by pressing Command or Control D, 
And now we would have to go in with the clone stamp tool or some other tool, the healing brush or something, to kind of try to make these areas match so it looks like more like a natural transition from from the two different backgrounds. If you don't know how to use the clone stamp tool, I'll put a link below this video to a tutorial I did on how to use it so you can check that out. I'm not going to go into it in this video. It would take too much time. It gives you a really head start on filling in the area you take it from and also for blending in the area that you move it to. Let's look at one other example here. In addition to moving things closer to each other, you can also use the Content Aware Move tool to make the bicycle, in this case, go higher. First I'll duplicate the background layer and then hide the background layer. And with the Content Aware Move tool, I'll draw a selection around our bike rider here. And this time I'm going to click and drag inside and I'm just going to move him up so it looks like he's making a higher jump than he is in the original photo. The other thing we could do, let me undo that move. This time, instead of moving the bike rider up, I'm going to move him over to the right more to make it look like he's making a longer jump. And then let go and let Elements do its analytics. It does a pretty good job. I'm going to deselect by pressing Command or Control D. And we have a little cleanup work there to do. I'll turn back on the background layer so we can see the before and after. There's the before and after. And we would just want to clean up that area a little and maybe right here. It does a good job overall. So that ends this tutorial on how to move items in your photo using the Content Aware Move tool in Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.